I'm Joe Talentino with I Know Jack's, the TV show where I tell you about cool local stuff. Great local restaurants to eat at, local small businesses, local craft beer, upcoming events, and much more. If you like that kind of stuff, make sure to like the I Know Jack's Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I Know Jack's, eat local, drink local, and be local. This time I have a great episode for you. First, we're going to visit one of the classic places here in Jacksonville, European Street. It's a local, family-owned restaurant that's been a staple in the River City for many years. I'm also going to show you a little bit from this year's Spring Home and Patio Show. As you may know, I host the cooking demo stage, and this time I had lots of different chefs come join me on stage. And as usual, I'll also tell you about my five top events, craft beer happenings, and much more. But first up, let's go to European Street. Today I'm at European Street in San Marco and today I wanted to introduce you guys to my favorite sandwich here and that's called the Ultimate. Now I'm gonna to talk to Andy and ask him all about it. European Street Cafe started with my family as a restaurant called Mr. Dunderbox in the Regency Square Mall in 1980 when my mom and dad bought the franchise that uh, had been there since, we think since the mall opened back in 67, but we've been in business as European Street since 1990, so uh, 29 years. Well, I, I assume you introduced a lot of Southerners to what a New York deli is. It all starts with with the Reuben and a you know, classic you know, a New York delicatessen sandwich yeah. with you know interesting ingredients. At least in 1980, you know, <laughs> I think a lot of people didn't know, you know corned beef from pastrami yeah. from Genoa salami. Yeah. Uh, so putting all of that together and then building upon that. So Andy, I picked the ultimate as the sandwich that I wanted to feature. Most of our sandwiches, we like to call them overstuffed or oversized to begin with, but I think that one kind of adds, <laughs> it takes it to the next level. The ultimate has roast beef, turkey, Genoa salami, summer sausage, smoked gouda, cheddar, and it comes with chips and a dill pickle. It's a massive sandwich. You have a lot of vegan options or vegetarian options. Absolutely. Uh, what, what made you go for that as well, a German restaurant? Uh, it's not just an afterthought. It's not just you know a sandwich that we took the meat off of. Right. Um, we've got some items that are made by Shakti Life Kitchen, mm -hmm. which is a, a organic vegan raw food company here in town that my sister operates, and so all of the ingredients are, are made by you know her and her staff, uh, and they came up with some recipes for us and. We're really happy to have them on the menu. Well, you guys introduced craft beer early on, before craft beer was kind of a thing. Yeah, we've been selling you know European imports yeah. for almost 40 years now. Yeah. Uh, back when you know most restaurants had one or two draft beers on tap, you know, we had 10 or 12, uh, and then when we went to 20, it was it was unheard of. Yeah, and uh, so uh, staying at the at the at the cutting edge of. of the beer sales is something that's important to us. So for the people that are coming to European Street for the first time, I mean you guys have been around for a long time, but for the first time person, what do you want them walking away thinking? Thinking that they, they got value for their money, that they were in a very comfortable, um, welcoming environment, that our, our staff is going to treat you like you've been here, you know, not for the first time, but that we see you a couple times a week or you know or, or more often pretty cool huh well this is the ultimate i was talking about earlier andy told, told us all about here's their basic reuben this is the raw reuben that's the one for ve vegetarians and of course you got your pretzel and beer soup and then duh we got to have some awesome tasty beers to go with it see you guys out at european street Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had a story here on the show about European Street Sweets. It's a really fun and unusual candy store that's located right next door to the San Marco European Street location. Now, if you missed that story, you can just go to iknowjacks.com and find the video there. Next, we're gonna talk about cooking at the Home and Patio Show.
I know Jax is doing a great St. Patrick's Day giveaway together with City Hop and Jax Brew Bus for their tour on St. Patrick's Day weekend, both 16th and 17th. Now here's how it works. You get two tickets and two t-shirts and that gets you one free drink at nine different places around Jax. Guess what else you get? The bus goes from each one around and around. They got two buses running. You get on and off all you want. I'm going to be on the buses. Will you be there? Now, if you want to find out all the details, go to iknowjax.com slash giveaway. I Know Jax was the sponsor of the cooking demo stage at the Spring Home and Patio Show at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. And this time I had 17 different chefs on stage. On Thursday, we started out with Michelle McInnes from the Sweet Spot Urban Lounge who made homemade graham crackers. She was followed by Garrett Lee from the Fish Company, and hey, I even got to assist. Sarah Copeland from Kraft was next. Now, you might recognize her from my TV show. She was one of the chefs who participated in the grilling and chilling last summer. Next was Paris from the Stuffed Beaver. She made delicious crepes, and I got to assist her too. We ended Thursday with Evan from Pie 95. You probably know him from his food truck, Pie 95. He makes awesome wood-fired pizza, but that was not what he made for us this time. He made a beef tartare with an Asian twist, and it was delicious. Friday started out strong with Osaki Buffet. Then we had Chef Omar Colazzo from the Omni who made bourbon honey short ribs. And after that, it was time for Chef Dennis Chan to make the stage. He even let us taste his award-winning Florida Sunshine Cake. He was followed by Phil Marka John, the gourmet realtor who made spinach Alfredo. Saturday started off strong and to me a new fresh face was Chef Amanda from Cafe Nola who made us amazing barbecue sliders. Next was Shane from Burnin's Barbecue. Maybe you're familiar with his food truck, but now he has a brick and mortar location with the same name in Mandarin, where he serves the same delicious barbecue you're used to. That demo was followed by another food truck, the Blazing Buffalo. And then we had Chef Roderick Smith from MLG. Now that's a fairly new restaurant located in the same building as Sweet Pete's downtown. Andrew Bryant Smith from Pastry is by Andrew Made Bread Pudding. Sunday started off with Rebetsky from the food truck Twisting Roots, and he was followed by another popular food truck in Jacksonville, the Blazing Asian. Gus showed us how to make sushi, and after that, we had a big cook-off with Waste Not, Want Not. Two chefs, Rosaria Camarada and Joshua Agin, cooked delicious food from Rescued Food. It was lots of fun and lots of tasty, delicious food. I want to thank all of you who participated and helped us make this spring's event such a success. I'm hoping we'll be doing the same again this fall, so if you missed this time, come and join us in September. Every week I'll talk about happenings and craft beer events in my TV show, I Know Jackson. Today, I'm having a Juan Moss Chili Jesus from Evil Twin. This week, everything is turning green and everybody is celebrating their Irish heritage, whether they have one or not. But before we get into that, I wanted to let you know about a collab beer that's being released at Southern Swells. It's called Peaked in High School, which is a rather depressing thing, I guess, but this is a rye pale ale and a collaboration between Rev Brewing and Southern Swells, so that's much less depressing than Peaking in High School. There's also releasing Sabro Dry Hopped Karate in the Garage, which I think a lot of my friends are going to really enjoy. All that's on Saturday at Southern Swells, and Subcultured is going to be serving subs, and Adam Latif will be there jamming in the tap room from 1 to 4 p.m. Tabula Rasa is also celebrating St. Patrick's Day. The doors open at noon. There will be great food from Bayou a Po' Boy, live music from Blues Dog 66, and a special beer release. That's at Tabula Rasa on March 16th. SJ Brewing Company up in Yuli is celebrating St. Patrick's Day too. They will have an Irish Red and an Irish Stout on tap, live music, and most importantly, a live leprechaun for your Instagram photos. Now my information doesn't tell me if this is a real Irish leprechaun, but I'm sure it will make your Instagram story go viral. That's at SJ Brewing on Saturday, March 16th. <coughs> Wicked Barley is preparing for their third annual St. Patrick's Day Bash on Saturday, March 16th from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. They're celebrating all day with live music, Irish food, and of course lots of beer. Green attire is encouraged, yeah, you can ask, but I'm not much for plain dress up. 
It's just not my style. Wicked Barley St. Patrick's Day bashes on Saturday, March 16th. You will, of course, see me riding the bus. I'm going on the Brew Bus City Hop St. Patrick's Day bus probably on both days. There's a lot of places to go and a lot of beer to taste, so come join me. Right now, I'm doing a giveaway for tickets, so just go to iknowjacks.com giveaway for more information about that. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching and slancha. So all of my pickers actually started eight years ago here in Jacksonville as a business. But the idea and the love and the passion for food start way, way, way back than when I was a kid in my grandma's kitchen. So by making pickles for so many years, came to the United States in 2000 and make pickles for family and friends and decided to sell it in farmers markets. We make sauerkraut, kimchi, and fermented vegetables like okra and green beans and red radishes. Bunch of fun stuff that it's really, really good for you. I'm talking about pickles that's made with love and made in salt water brine. They're full of probiotics and electrolytes. This is called functional food that's actually heal you and make you feel good. But the way we make the pickles, we immerse them in salt water brine. So we get local cucumbers in Florida farmlands, Jacksonville water, salt out of Spain and Italy. We mix the water, we add the spice, we add the garlic, we add the fresh dill, everything in big 50 gallons barrels. Let it sit for two weeks. Okay, it's a video, so I need to be in it. in the local stores, but most important, when it's raining and don't feel like going out, you can go on olivemypickle.com, shop now, and you will get the package in a day or two. Every week I take a look at the fun and interesting events in Jacks. Here's a list of my top five things to do in Jacksonville. Now please let me know if you agree with me or if I missed something. At number five is Waitress. The uplifting and funny musical Waitress is coming to Jacksonville. This is a story about Jenna, a waitress and expert pie maker who dreams of a way out of her small town and rocky marriage. This musical is at the Times Union Center of Performing Arts March 12th through 17th. At number four is The Players. That's right, The Players Championship is starting this week and this is one of the biggest annual events in the Jacksonville area. So even though I'm not a golf player myself, I had to put the players at TPC Sawgrass as my number four for this week. This year the event has moved forward and it's running into St. Patrick's Day instead of Mother's Day. And this is one of the most well-organized events you can go to for visitors from all over the world. It's always great for people watching and of course, watching world-class golf. The players takes place March 12th through 17th. At number three is Springfield St. Patrick's Day Block Party. Now this is gonna be a historic St. Patrick's Day Block Party in Springfield. At least that's what my information told me. Main Street between 7th and 8th will be closed and filled with live music, food, beer, skateboard ramps, vendors, and other fun activities. The Springfield St. Patrick's Day Block Party takes place March 16th from 1 to 9 p.m. At number two is the Jacksonville St. Patrick's Day Street Festival. This festival is a new contender for the title of the biggest party. This event takes place at the Riverside Arts Market and includes live music all day, plus food trucks, vendors, makers, a kid's zone, games, crafts, street performers, and more. This event takes place from noon to 10 p.m. on Sunday, March 17th at Riverside Arts Market. At number one is the St. Patrick's Day Brew Bus Tour. Of course, my top pick is gonna be the St. Patrick's Day Brew Bus with City Hop. If you didn't win our ticket giveaway, just make sure you buy one. 
buy your t-shirt and you'll get a free drink at each stop. Buses will run 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. on both Saturday and Sunday, so come join me. The St. Patrick's Day Brew Bus is March 16th and 17th, and you can find all the information at cityhop.com. That's my top five list for the week of March 11th through 17th. What are your top picks for the week? Now, if you're watching me online, let me know what event I should have put on my list and which events you're going to attend in the comments below. For more ideas about fun things to do, visit iknowjacks.com. That's it for this time. Now, if you're watching me on Sunday, don't forget that we need to spring forward. I never enjoy that. I need all the beauty sleep I can get. And lately, that hasn't been enough. Remember to go and sign up for the giveaway as well. You can find all the information on iknowjacks.com. I'll be back next week with another episode, but until then, I will see you on the internet.